All right, guys, so today we're going to look at multiplying and dividing rationals, uh, which is actually going to be pretty simple since we've already kind of been doing this when we've been graphing rational functions and finding holes. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, though, is just review how to multiply and divide fractions. All right, so when you multiply, you multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. But sometimes those numbers are a little bit large, so it'll be a little bit easier if you simplify before you multiply. So when it comes to simplifying fractions, you can simplify the top and the bottom if that's possible, or you can also simplify diagonally. So if you look here, 22 and 44 are both divisible by 22. So that leaves me with 1, and that leaves me with 2. You also don't have to simplify as far as, you, as, far as possible at this step, as long as you simplify at the end. Um, so on the next part, 27 and 81, I know they're both divisible by 9, that's not the uh, greatest multiple I could take out, but at least it's something to make this easier to multiply. So now I have 9 over 6. Now since I didn't take the biggest number at that point, I need to simplify here at the end, and that leaves me with 3 over 2. All right? Multiplying fractions, very similar. Um, you just have one extra step. Okay, So whenever you are dividing fractions, you flip the second and multiply. So the way I always learned this, it was dividing fractions, I don't know why, or dividing fractions, it's easy as pi. You flip the second and then you multiply. All right, same rules apply. If you want, you can go ahead and multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Or if you want to simplify first diagonally or up and down, you can. So this leaves me with 14. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that um, concept, and we're going to use that for some more difficult rational functions. Now, the first thing I'm going to look at is just basic simplifying, because there's a couple things that I see frequently that do not work. Um, and one of them is on this first example. You see there's an x cubed at the top and an x cubed at the bottom, and you just want to cancel them out. Okay, you cannot do that. All right, so if you see this little box down here, all right, okay, do not do that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a math uh, example that shows why this does not work. Okay, so look at 2 over 4 plus 1. Well, that's the same thing as 2 over 5. All right, so if we do what you guys just said we could do, let's say 2 over 4, cancel that out and make that a 2. I'd be left with 1 over 2 plus 1. Okay, that is not the same thing as 2 fifths. Okay, so that's, it does not work. Even if it's up and down, okay, you may say, hey, look, 6 and 3, those will cancel. That would leave you with 2 plus 1, which is 3, okay? That is not, okay, what the original problem was. The original problem was 7 over 3, okay? So this does not work. You can't just cancel one term when there's addition and subtraction. So in order to cancel out terms, what we want to do is we want to factor first. All right, so let's look at this first one. I can factor an x squared out of the bottom. And now, since we're looking at factors that are multiplied, this factor has an x squared, this factor has an x squared. So then I could take that factor out of the top and the bottom, and I'm left with x over x minus 1. Same thing on the second one. I don't want to just go ahead and cancel. Hey, look, x is cancel, okay, and the 2's cancel. Okay, I don't want to do that. I need to factor it out first. So the bottom, x squared comes out, and you're left with 4x minus 1. And again, the top and the bottom now do not have a 2 as a factor, so that 2 has to stay. But that x can go ahead and cancel out top and bottom. So that leaves me with 2 over x times 4x minus 1. And then same thing on the last one. Do not just cancel those and say it's 3. Okay, That is not what we're doing. We need a factor. 2 comes out of the top and bottom. And now look at your factors, OK? 2 and 6 are both divisible by 2. So I'm left with x squared plus 2 over 3x squared. And that is your best answer. Um, another kind of example of this bad canceling, uh, a lot of times you'll see it in quadratic formula. So let's say quadratic formula was 4 plus 3 times the square root of 7 over 2. Okay, we could not just cancel those numbers. If you guys remember, we had to look at all three of those numbers. It's the same idea, okay, because let's say that um, there's nothing common in those two terms above to factor out. But if this was 
let's say that this was 2 and this was 6, I could cancel out that 2 because, again, that 2 would factor out. And when it's factored out, it's okay to cancel. All right. So let's look at a couple other examples. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the product on these. Now, one thing, this is something you actually have already done before and you've been doing it with rational functions. But what's new is what we're going to do is we're going to list the excluded values. The excluded values are anything that makes the bottom of the fraction equal 0, because we know you cannot divide by 0. So if there's any variable that if we make it a certain number, it makes the bottom of the fraction equal 0, we need to make a note of that so we know. Now in this first one, we can go ahead and simplify it um, to make it a little bit easier to multiply. Again, you don't have to simplify it all the way. You can simplify it just enough to where you can multiply across the top and the bottom. If you want, you can go ahead and multiply it right now. Okay, we'll actually do it both ways. I'm going to start by simplifying, though, and I'm going to simplify up and down. Okay, so 6 over 3 simplifies to 2. x squared over x is going to simplify to just x. y over y cubed is going to simplify to just y squared. And then over here on the right fraction, my y will cancel out with one of those y's. So now I can multiply across the top. So I'm left with 18x to the 6th and y. Okay, so when you multiply those variables, you add the exponents. And then at the bottom, I'm still left with 2y squared. And now it's not completely simplified, so let's go ahead and finish it up. 18 over 2 becomes 9x to the 6th is at the top, and then I would have a y still at the bottom. Now let's say I didn't simplify anything and I just multiplied. This will still give you the same answer. Okay? So if I multiply across the top, I would have had 54x to the 7th, y to the 3rd. Again, because I multi when I multiply, I add the exponents. Then at the bottom, I'd have 6xy to the 4th. And now I would just simplify the same way I just did top and bottom. So this would become 9 x to the 6th over y, which is the same answer. Okay, so either way you want to do this, whatever is going to be easiest for you guys. Typically, I think it's easier to, multi to get rid of some of your factors, um, and just enough to where it's not complicated, but enough to where you can multiply pretty easily. Now, b is very similar to what we were doing with rational functions. Uh, what's important here is you have to be able to factor. Okay, so let's go ahead and factor all of these on the top. I'm going to rewrite it down here, actually, so it's a little easier to see. 5x comes out of the top, I'd be left with 1 minus x. x squared minus 4x plus 3 factors into x minus 3x minus 1. The top of the next fraction is going to be x minus 3 and x minus 2. And then I'm left with 5x at the bottom. So now let's see what we can cancel. Again, we can cancel up and down, or we can cancel vertically. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and list my excluded values. Okay, so what we're going to look, any value that makes the bottom equal 0 cannot be one of my answers. So x cannot equal 3, because if I plugged in 3, it would make that fraction equal 0 at the bottom, and you can't divide by 0. All right, x also cannot equal 1, because this factor would make that 0. And x cannot equal 0. And it's easier to do it at the beginning, because once something is canceled, we may forget about it. All right, so let's go ahead and cancel things out. x minus 3 and x minus 3 will cancel out. 5x and 5x cancel out. So let's look at what we're left with. So 1 minus x times x minus 2 over x minus 1. Now, this is very close to your final answer. All right, the only thing that we're missing, there actually is a way to cancel out this with the bottom. What you have to do, if you notice, if I take a negative out of both of those terms, okay, I could rewrite that as a negative, negative 1 plus x. All right, if you think about it, if I went back and distributed, it would be the same thing. So I'm factoring out a negative from both of those terms. I'm going to leave that x minus 2 just how it was, because I didn't take anything out of that, and then my bottom is still the same. So now that that negative is factored out, negative 1 plus x, isn't that the same thing as x minus 1? So now, 
they can cancel out each other. So I'm left with a negative x minus 2, or I could rewrite that as negative x plus 2. And just remember, in this problem, x cannot be any of those things. Okay, and this will help us like when we get back to solving, because let's say x was the number 3. If I went and plugged 3 into x in my original equation, I'm going to end up dividing by 0, which I can't do. All right. And real quick, I want to backtrack to that first question because I realized I forgot to put our excluded values in the first one. So on the first problem, values that would make the bottom equal 0 at either of those points, all right, x could not equal 0 and y could not equal 0 because, again, that would make the bottom of my fraction um, be 0 and we can't divide by 0. All right, so now we're going to look at uh, division. If you've been okay with multiplication, this is going to be the exact same thing. The only thing you have to remember when you divide, you flip the second and then you multiply. Um, the only other thing that's hard about division versus multiplication, there's an extra place we have to check to make sure for our excluded values. All right, so let's go ahead and factor this first one. And I'm going to go ahead and keep it the way it was originally written. Okay, so at this point, before I flip it, I'm going to go ahead and find my excluded values. Okay, so right now, what makes the bottom equal 0? x cannot equal 5. Okay, and x cannot equal 6, because those values would make me divide by 0. Now let's go ahead and flip the second. And before you flip the second, if you want, you notice how there's an x minus 6 top and bottom. If you want to go ahead and cancel it out, you can now. Um, if you want to wait, you can wait. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it for now. All right, then let's start cancel. Let's let's see now. Look, again, let's check the bottom of our fraction. Is there anything on the bottom of my fraction that wasn't in the original? And there is. There's that x at the bottom. So because there's that x at the bottom, x also cannot equal zero. And the reason that happens. That would make this right fun function 0, which means whatever I get here, I would then be dividing by 0. Okay, and again, we cannot divide by 0. So those are my excluded values. Okay, so again, with quotients and uh, division, you really just need to check in two places to find anything at the bottom that could equal 0. Okay, so now let's go ahead and cancel. x minus 6 top and bottom cancels out. x minus 5 top and bottom cancels out. And then I have an x and an x cubed, which will simplify. So I am left with 7x squared over 2. And again, x cannot equal any of those possible values. Because again, if I plug that into the original, um, it would give me, uh, I'd be dividing by 0. All right, if you feel pretty comfortable with this, go ahead and pause the video. Try example b, and we'll go over that here in a second. All right, the hardest part for example B actually is going to be the factoring. Uh, so on this one, uh, the top part we got to remember if A is not 1, these are a little harder to factor. Okay, so what I would do, 6 times negative 15 gives me a negative 90. So I am looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 90 and add to 1. So those two numbers are 10 and negative 9. Once I find those numbers, I split the middle. And then I'm going to do grouping. So I cut it in half. 2x comes out. I'm left with 3x plus 5. I go to the next one. Minus 3 comes out. I'm left with 3x plus 5. My parentheses match. So that's my first factor. And 2x minus 3 is my second factor. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this just so I can rewrite this original problem. So my factors, again, the top factors into... 3x plus 5 and 2x minus 3. If you were struggling with that kind of factoring, um, you're probably going to want to come in for tutoring to get some extra practice because that's going to keep coming back up. Okay. So now I am dividing by 3x squared plus 5x. I'm going to go ahead and factor, and x could come out, so that would be 3x plus 5. All right, so anything right now that makes the bottom equal 0, 
so x cannot equal 0. Then we're going to flip the second and multiply. Now when I flip this, remember it's not written on there, but this is actually over 1. So when I flip it, it's going to become 1 over x times 3x plus 5. All right, um, there's only one factor that cancels. It's my 3x plus 5. And again, at this point, I look at the bottoms, okay? x cannot equal negative 5 thirds because that would make that bottom equal 0. If you're having trouble finding that negative 5 thirds, what I did, I basically just did 3x plus 5 equals 0, and I solved that. Okay, so that's where that comes from. It's a little bit harder when those numbers are, um, it's not just like x plus or minus a number. All right, then we look at what's left. I'm left with 2x minus 3 over 4x cubed, because I would add those exponents. All right, we are almost done. The last one on here, um, actually very easy, much easier problem. The notation here just looks a little bit intimidating. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this so we got some more space. All right, the hardest thing about this one is seeing how to rewrite it. Remember, fractions just mean division. So this is basically a division bar. So I'm gonna rewrite this as x plus one over x squared divided by x minus two over x. So now it's written as a division, I can flip my second and multiply. Let's go ahead and list our excluded values. So x cannot equal zero. All right, let's flip our second and multiply. There's an x top and bottom, so those cancel out. So I'm left with x plus one over x times x minus two. All right, and again, in the final and in this step, I have another excluded value, okay? X cannot equal two because it makes the bottom of that fraction equal zero. But this is what I'm left with. All right, so that is it for multiplication and division. Tomorrow we're gonna look at addition and subtraction.